Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is March 20th, 2014. This is Texan TV News from Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas, and I'm Shelby Hilton. In today's headlines, man dies in overheated prison cell, Tarleton hosts 52nd annual jazz festival, Erath drought conditions looming, human smuggling operation busted, enrollment for Affordable Care Act's health insurance coming to a close, Flight 370 fly, files deleted, and Texan and Tex Ann track and field make history. Now for day, today's top story from the Associated Press. Jerome Murdeau was just looking for a warm place to sleep on a chilly night last month when curled up in an enclosed stairwell on the roof of a Harlem public housing uh, project where he was arrested for trespassing. A week later, the mentally ill homeless man was found dead in a, a Rikers Island jail cell that four city officials say overheated, had overheated to at least 100 degrees, apparently because of malfunctioning equipment. The officials told Associated Press that the 56-year-old former Marine was on antipsychotic and anti-seizure medication, which may have made him more, vul more vulnerable to the heat. He also apparently did not open a small vent in his cell, cell, as other inmates did, to let cool air in. In a statement issued Wednesday, Department of Correction Acting Commissioner Mark, Mark Cranston called Murdo's death unfortunate and re reiterated that an internal investigation will look into the entire episode, including issues of staff performance and the adequacy of procedures. Cranston also acknowledged that the temperature in Murdo's cell was unusually high and said that action has been taken to fix medical problems to ensure safe temperatures. The department said it had addressed two contributing factors an outside consultant identified as causing the excess heat. It also said temperature checks immediately after the death revealed several cells nearby were over 80 degrees. In campus news, reported by the Tarleton webpage, trumpet virtuoso composer and educator John Faddis will serve as this year's featured guest artist with student jazz musicians as part of the 52nd annual Tar Tarleton Jazz Festival on Saturday, March 22nd. The performance will be the closing concert for the festival. At 7.30 p.m., the concert will feature Faddis and the Tarleton Jazz Ensemble under, under the direction of Greg Ball. Faddis broke into the jazz scene in the early 1970s and became well known for his uncanny ability to sound like his idol, Dizzy Gillespie. Faddis led the Carnegie Hall Jazz Band for a decade and has conducted more than 40 concerts in 10 years during that time. The ensemble presented more than 135 musicians and 70 guest artists and premiered works by over 35 composers. Director Greg Ball said the festival is designed to give students in-depth exposure to all aspects of jazz. The band will perform for several jazz educators who will provide written comments. Following their performances, the group will work with a cl clinician and will receive immediate feedback on positive aspects and get help in areas of need. All jazz festival events during the day are open to the public and admission is free. Tickets to the evening concert are $5 and will go on sale one hour prior to the show at the Fine Arts Center box office. In regional news, reported by the Stephenville Empire Tribune, with drought conditions still looming, residents are asked to be mindful of water usage. The current dry conditions of Texas are leaving everything from lakes and rivers to streams and creeks dry. Much of the state is experiencing exceptional drought conditions, with many counties asking for natural disaster assistance from the federal government. Although Erath County has yet to face such dire conditions, officials in Dublin and Stephenville are asking residents to keep water conservation in mind. What we are facing currently is stage one water restriction. Nancy Woldridge, Dublin City Administrator. We are asking residents on city water to consider the drought and future water so shortages when using water, Woldridge added. The Upper Leon River Municipal Water District, where Dublin gets its water, is heavily dependent on rainfall and runoff. The Upper Leon River Dis Water District works closely with the Brazos River Authority to ensure more than 1,500 consumers get the best product possible. The Upper Leon River MWD is considering moving to stage two, meaning residents would, would have to comply at, with heavier usage restrictions. Stage two would only be an enacted if the Brazos River Authority notified the district that the Lake Proctor res Reservoir 
was at or below 40% of its total active water supply. Forecasters say it will take a significant rainfall event to ease the pain many Texans are feeling as the summer inches closer. And now, t today's Texas national and international news from the Associated Press. A house overflowing with more than 100 people presumed to be in the U.S. illegally was uncovered just outside of Houston on Wednesday. The suspected stash house was found during a search for a 24-year-old woman and her two children that were reported missing by relatives late Tuesday after a man failed to meet them as planned. Many of the people in the home that authorities said to be part of a human smuggling operation were dressed only in undergarments and they were sitting in, a filthy, con in filthy conditions surrounded by trash bags full of old clothing. When police opened the doors to the house, they found a very large group of people, some sitting on top of one, one another, in very confined spaces. Authorities yelled out the missing woman's name to see if she was there, and she emerged with the two children. The house is a single family home in the Southern Harris County. It is about 1,500 square feet. At first, officers saw only a mattress on the floor and a refrigerator in the exterior room. When they went further into the home, they found 94 men, 15 women, and the woman with her two children. Authorities said five men have been arrested, and Houston police has handed the investigation over to the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. In national news, fewer than two weeks remain in the initial open enrollment period for the Affordable Care Act's health insurance exchanges. According to a recent Gallup poll, Uninsured U.S. residents remained fairly evenly split on the issue. The poll found that 55% of the uninsured plan to purchase coverage this year and a sig significant minority will likely opt to pay the penalty. Individuals' personal politics come into play when deciding whether to comply with the ACA's individual mandate. However, for many others, particularly young adults, the decision comes down to a purely financial one. There has been much attention paid to how much individuals will pay for not complying with the individual mandate. Many people believe it's a simple $95 fee. The reality, however, is more complex. Although the cost of the individual mandate penalty is far lower than the cost of coverage, oftentimes even when the subsides are factored in and even after the penalties increase in the coming years, deciding not to get coverage is far more complex than looking at just those two factors. Putting it simply, there is no easy answer to whether or not uh, whether someone will purchase health insurance. For the significant portion of young adults who will have no annual health care expenses, it's hard to justify spending thousands of dollars of a limited budget for coverage. However, it's also hard to justify taking the risk that a sizable hospital bill and quite possibly financial insolvency could be a possible outcome. In international news, the FBI joined forces with Malaysian authorities in analyzing deleted data on a flight simulator belonging to the pilot of the missing Malaysian Airlines plane. While distraught re relatives of the passengers unleashed their anger, waiting in frustration at 12 days of uncertainty. File containing, files containing records of flight simulations were deleted February 3rd from the device found in the home of the Malaysian Airline pilot, Captain Zahir Ahmed Shah. Malaysian police chief Khalid Abu said. It was not immediately clear whether investigators thought that deleting the files was unusual. The files might hold some, sign of, some signs of unusual flight plans that could help explain where the missing plan, plan went. Then again, the files could have been deleted simply to clear memory for all other material. The CEO of flight simulation software company said that Zahir was a customer who had developed an online presence in which he dedicated many hours of his time to promoting the enjoyment of flying generally, and flight simulation specifically. Flight 370 disappeared March 8th on a night flight from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing. Malaysian authorities have not ruled out any possible explanations, but have said the evidence so far suggests that the flight was deliberately turned back across Malaysia to the, uh, to the Strait of Malacca, which its communication systems disabled. Officials are unsure what happened next or why. The crisis has exposed the lack of a fail-safe way of tracking modern passenger planes on which data in transmission systems and transponders, which make them visible to civilian radar, have been severed. At enormous cost, 26 countries are helping Malaysia look for the plane. In sports news, according to Tarleton Sports, for the first time in history, 
Both the Texan and the Tex-Ann outdoor track and field teams are ranked in the nation's top 25 polls by the United States Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association. Head coach Pat Ponder said the ranking speaks volume of the quality of the Tarleton's track and field program as a whole. He says he's excited, but the team is going to have to continue to work hard and continue to earn the recognition it's being given. The men's program has reached its highest rankings in the school history by being named number nine team in the nation and one of four Lone Star Conference schools in the top 25 polls. Angelo State checked in at number four in the polls, while Tarleton came in ahead of Texas A&M Kingsville at number 10 and Texas A&M Commerce at number 13. In the women's program, the Texans rounded out the top 25 poll by securing the number 25 position and were one of the three Lone Star Conference teams in the rankings, with Angelo State at number three and Texas A&M Kingsville at number 13. The rankings released by the United States Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association are not influenced by preseason data. This first set of rankings are not referred to as preseason rankings, but rather the first in a series of regular season rankings issued each week from this point on. The next poll will be released March 25th. Now for today's weather forecast from the Weather Channel. Today's high is 75 degrees with a southern wind speed at 9 miles per hour. Tonight will be 49 degrees with a wind speed of 11 miles per hour. Today's broadcast was produced by Laura Ryland and Carly West. Don't forget to tell your friends about us and become a fan of Texan TV News on Facebook. I'm Shelby Hilton, and tune in tomorrow for the latest news from the Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas.